Thank you. Thank you. So, I don't know about yours, but my childhood sucked. I was born in Hong Kong. I came to Canada years ago with no money, no connections, and not a word of the English language on my list. Now, as you can tell from my accent, English is not my first language. I had to learn it from scratch. Some of my friends, they say I still speak like Jackie Chan. When I was in high school, when I was growing up, I was one of the only three Chinese in my school. So I didn't get along with the other kids. They, they made fun of me. They teased me. They, they bullied me. I got beat up a few times. So I was a loner all the way through high school. Let me ask you a question. How many of you still have friends from those high school days and, and growing up days? Can I just show hands? Well, good for you because I have none. Okay? I, I have a few enemies, though. So my mom and dad got divorced when I was 16 years old. And that's one of my, unfortunately, my dad had an affair. And that's why, one of the reasons why my mom didn't want to stay in Hong Kong and why we immigrated to, to Canada. Also, when I was in Hong Kong, I was getting into a lot of trouble. Um, I was basically like a punk kind of kid. So if you can imagine going to a country where you don't speak the language. Growing up, I didn't have a lot of confidence. Growing up, I wasn't one of those people, unlike many of you guys, that had big dreams. I wasn't one of those people that was born to do some great or wonderful things. I wasn't one of those people that had great talents. And I wasn't one of those people that know all the right people in all the right places. Because when I first came to Canada, I didn't know anybody. I wasn't one of those people that was very smart. I was what my teacher would say, average intelligence. Maybe sometimes below average intelligence. Depends on the class. So, I wasn't one of those students that had a good resume, that had a good education. In fact, I dropped out of college. So, not in a million years could I ever imagine I would be doing what I'm doing today. That I would be writing books, that I would be building companies, that I would be speaking, that I would be sharing my story with you. Not in a million years could I ever imagine I would be doing what I'm doing today. You see... How many of you come from, by show of hands, how many of you come from a dysfunctional family? Yeah. <laughs> Look around the room. Okay, everybody's got one. What's interesting is, it's because of my dysfunctional childhood, and that's what made me a functional achiever that I am today. It's because of my upbringing. It's because of my family's divorce that I learned to be self-reliant. It's because that I'm the only child in my family. That when my mom and dad got divorced, I had to grow up, stop being a fucking kid and be a man. And mature. And grow up and take care of my mom. So I see a lot of people, they see their childhood as wounds. I don't believe that. I believe that your adversity is your advantage. Please write that down. Your adversity is your advantage. Because think about how do, you, how do you work out? How do you build a muscle? What do you do? Think about it. You, when you want to work out, you put stress. You create pain. And then your muscle, you destroy, basically you destroy the muscle, tear apart the muscle fiber, and then when it grows back, it becomes what? Stronger. It becomes stronger. So your past... Your childhood, that's not wounds. I believe that's your, your, advan- your adversity is your advantage. So my very first, thing, very first lesson that I would like to share with you is, I hope your childhood sucked too. <laughs> because it means you have developed the muscle to endure the pain to succeed in business. Because 96% of the businesses fail within 10 years. Only 4% make it. Just think of a room like that. Only 4% make it. Only, one, only 4 out of 100 companies survive. And we are just talking about survival. Not even being very profitable or very successful. If you think about it, business, the game of business is not for the weak. The game of business is not for the wannabe. If you're a sissy, don't play. 
The game of business is for the committed. The game of business is for the ambitious. The game for business is for the people who do whatever the fuck it takes to succeed. It's not for everyone. You see, I don't play golf. I don't watch sports. I don't watch hockey. I don't know how it works or the game. I know I'm in Vancouver. That's not the right thing to say. But I just don't watch game. Like I don't watch sports. You know. And people ask me, but why? Like that's what every guy does. And I say, listen. I'm playing the most competitive sport on the fucking planet. It's called business. It's 24-7, 365 days. There's no rest. Most games, a couple hours, of, you know, that's it. This is every single day someone is trying to kick your ass. Someone is trying to steal your customer. Someone is trying to grab your market share. Someone is trying to try to beat you. I don't need to watch a bunch of guys chasing a damn ball <laughs> to get my thrill. <laughs> Not entrepreneur. Like, I get a lot of thrill just running my own damn businesses. I get a kick out of it. So think about it. Think about it. How many of you also heard the saying, you know, do what you love and the money will follow you? That's a load of crap. Because let me ask you a question. How many of you are doing what you love, you're following your passion, and you ask yourself, you wonder, where the hell is the money? So there you go. That doesn't work. Where the hell is the money? So that's not it. I I was having a conversation with a friend of mine who is a Howard, who is an international sales trainer, international and a motivational speaker. We're having this conversation, discussing about, well, you know, do what you love and the money will follow. And we were talking, and Howard said to me, you know, Dan, you know what I love to do? I would love to just stay home in my underwear, you know, with my spend time with my kids, have a beer, and watch a basketball game, and just have a slice of pizza. You know, but the problem is I can't figure out a way for people to pay me and watch me to do that. <laughs> so I have to get on the road and speak and train and make a living. So yes, you want to follow your passion. I agree with that. I love what I do. I'm a very passionate guy. But what I'm saying is make sure your passion solves a problem in the marketplace. Make sure your passion is unique and compelling. And you make sure your passion adds value to people's lives more than your competitors, and better make sure your passion makes you money. It makes you money. So that's lesson number two, is not do what you love and the money will follow. Repeat after me. It is love what you do. It is what? what And you be damn good at it. And you make sure you get paid doing that. You make sure you get paid doing that. Lesson number three. Write this down. Save yourself before you try to save the world. Save yourself before you try to save the world. You see, the best way to help the poor is not to become one of them. Sometimes in business, you have to be incredibly selfish so you can be incredibly generous. I'll say it again. Sometimes in business, you have to be incredibly selfish so you can be incredibly generous. Oh, well, but Dan, are you saying it's all about the money? No, it's, ne- it's not about the money. It's never about the money. It's about choices. It's about freedom. It's about your lifestyle. It's about living up to your true potential. It is about becoming all you can be. Because it makes no sense to me when you do a good job, you provide a good product or service to the marketplace, and you work hard and still have to struggle to make ends meet. I believe an entrepreneur who does a good job, who provides value to the marketplace, deserves to be well paid. In fact, let me ask you a question. How many of you believe you deserve to be well paid? Absolutely. You deserve to be well paid. Money earned is a byproduct of value creation. Money earned is a byproduct of value creation. 
It means the more value you deliver, the more people you deliver value to, the more money you're going to make. I make a lot of money because I deliver a lot of value. I serve a lot of people, both in terms of scale and also in terms of impact. It's very, very simple. See, thinking of yourself that you're doing a great job sacrificing yourself for your business by being poor and noble is just not a good idea. It's just not a good idea. Because if you think about it, if you are doing a good job and you're delivering value to the marketplace, and people who are delivering value to, they're getting value from it, then don't you deserve to make a nice profit and feel damn good about it? Yes? There's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I have an incredible mom. Like, my mom is, like, so kind, so generous. She has a lot of friends. I don't know how she does it, but everywhere she goes, she makes friends with everybody. It's something I want to learn. When I was growing up, my mom was always, always very supportive. And she would say to me, hey, you know, Dan, when you grow up, you can achieve anything you want. You touch many people's lives, and you'll be rich, and you'll be famous, then you will take care of me. <laughs> Smart mom. Smart mom. So what drives you? What motivates you? You see, I believe when you, and here's my belief, and you don't have to buy my belief, but here's my belief. I believe when you learn how to make money, you're actually morally obligated to make as much money as you can. Because I believe it is a gift. I believe learning how to make money is a gift that you should use to the highest degree. And that leads to lesson number four. Lesson number four. And that is promotion over creation. Promotion over creation. Promotion over what? Creation. Creation. You see, most entrepreneurs, they take too much time creating that perfect product at the, the right time and making my thing, everything is perfect and they, before they will launch it. Promotion over creation. Most entrepreneurs fail because they're not getting enough attention. What is it? In the marketplace. If you want to grow your company, if you want to grow your brand, you want to grow your revenue, you must get attention. Now, Dan, what do you mean by attention? What I'm saying is you need to generate enough awareness that you and your company own the market. Because if you're not a lead dog, the view is always the same. It's always the same. In any marketplace, you notice there's only usually one, maybe two leaders. When I think of any category, any product, when I say, let's say, jeans, what what brand comes to mind? Levi's. When I say computer, what comes to mind? Mac or uh, Maple? Maybe Windows? Windows kind of like, eh, right? right you know, so you think about it. They only, and you try to think of third or fourth or fifth place. It's very difficult. So in your consumer's mind, you can only remember one or two products or services in that category. So you need to get attention. Absolutely need to get attention. And you gotta keep. You gotta promote. You gotta. You gotta be excited about what you do. It is your duty. It is your duty, obligation, to promote your stuff all the time. How often? All the time. Because I have a YouTube channel called Danlock TV. I have over two hundred videos on it. I have a podcast that I do where it's called Shoulders of Titans where I interview successful entrepreneurs every single week. And also, multi-million entrepreneurs, billionaire entrepreneurs every single week on iTunes. I have hundreds of articles online. I write articles. I give interviews. I do speaking gigs. Constantly, always, always promoting. And that's not even the main thing I do. That's on top of running and advising the 20-plus companies that I have. I do this on a fucking part-time basis. you got to understand. Like, if this is what I'm doing, then what the hell you should be doing promoting your business? Whatever action you think you're, t- you're taking, people think, oh, but Dan, I post, like, I, I did a tweet, but <laughs> shit, how come my, my phone doesn't ring off the hook? <laughs> like... Right, you know, 
not one tweet, not ten tweets, not a hundred tweets, tweets, one thousand tweets. Not one fucking video, not ten videos, one hundred videos, one thousand videos. Because there's so much noise in the marketplace, you need to do so much more to just cut through the clutter. See, let me ask you a question: Are there products and services that are similar to yours right now in the marketplace? And they're not as good, but they're selling more. Yes or no? Why? You notice if you observe very often because they're doing more to get attention. Money follows attention. Money follows what? Attention is the new currency. Attention is the new currency. So the obscurity kills businesses. Obscurity kills businesses. So you have to stand out. You have to you have to get yourself out there. You have to promote. You have to get people talking about you. You have to people get people talking about you that you're over the top. Get people talking about you that you're outrageous, that you're exceptional. The more you stand out, the better off you will be. That also means you're not gonna not get everybody to like you. Now some of you are like, mm, they don't like me. <laughs> not everybody will like you. Just get over it, okay? You want to wear a fucking red suit? You wear it. Stand out. You have to stand out. Absolutely, you got to stand out. So, promotion over creation. Lesson number five. Lesson number five. Stop pretending. Stop telling and start asking. Stop pretending and start asking. Sometimes I talk to entrepreneurs and I would ask them, hey, you know, how, how's your business? And they would say, well, it's, it's fine. It's fine. You know. yeah. <laughs> it's fine. You know, you know what fine says? Fine is actually an acronym. F I A E, fine. F I N E, this is what it stands for. It stands for freaked out, in debt, not making enough money, and emotionally stressed out. <laughs> My business is fine. It's not fucking fine! It's not! It is not fine! It, it's. It, it, it fascinates me. Sometimes after a speaking gig like this, every time I speak and ask entrepreneurs, they would come up to me and they would, because I share my story and they would want to share their story with me. And I, lo- I mean, I love hearing those stories. I live to collect those stories. And they would come up to me and they would spend 15, 20 minutes telling me their stories. I will listen. I'm a very great listener. And I don't, I don't say a word. But they never ask, well, you know, Dan, what do you think? You know, out of the thousands and thousands of entrepreneurs that I meet, most, maybe 10%, ask, what do you think? It's amazing. It is amazing. We don't, I don't somehow, we are loner, that we want to be independent, we want to look good, or whatever the hell it is. That we just don't ask for help. We just don't ask for help. Or we don't, I don't know if we don't know how to, okay, first of all, we don't know how to do it. We don't do it. And if we do do it, we fuck it up. I'll tell you how we fucked up. <laughs> Number one is people would approach me and say, and try to sell me the shit. Like, I don't know you, but you want to buy some of my stuff? Like, it's like you walk up to a girl on the street, your home or mine. <laughs> right? Like, you know, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. Like, how about just, like, get to, get to know my name first? Hello? How about get my phone number? Like, at least a couple phone calls, a couple texts, then go for a coffee. Hello? It, it makes no sense. Or, when they do ask for help, they do it the wrong way. They're saying, well, you know, Dan, I love what you do. You seem to be, you know, well-connected. Very successful. You know, can you, can you help me out? They have this, this entitlement mentality that just because people are successful that we should help them. And we want to help them. But successful people will help people help themselves. 
So what they are saying is, here's what. So, Dan, can you help me to promote my stuff to, to your, your people? Here's, here's what it sounds to me. It sounds like, well, Dan, you don't know me. You don't know my product or service. Why don't you put your hard-earned reputation on the line and promote me to your most important clients or partners, even though you know nothing about me? That's what I'm hearing. That's not how I do it. The way I do it is I play the contribution game. Any interaction, I first go, how can I help you? 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 And you keep building that, that goodwill. I call that, write this down, relational capital. That's your future bank account. You keep investing in that relational capital, and you keep building that. And someday and sometime when you use it, people are willing to help you. People want to do business with you. In fact, chances are when you deliver enough value, if you're smart, deliver in a smart way, people want to do business with you. Are you following me? Yes? That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Lesson number six. Master, don't dabble. Master, don't dabble. Struggling entrepreneurs, they jump from one thing to another. They have the, what I call the shiny object syndrome. Oh, here's the latest thing, and I could do this you know, Facebook advertising, and then there's LinkedIn, and then there's Twitter, and then there's Periscope, and then it's whatever. Something new flavor of the month, sometimes new, new flavor of the week. You want to master one thing and then build on the next. In my career, at first, I master copywriting. I learned how to create a compelling marketing message that motivates people to take action now. And then I master marketing. Then I master selling one-on-one. 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 One -on -one. Then I master internet marketing. I learned how to build sites and get traffic and convert those traffic. Then I learned public speaking. Then I master that. Then I learned deal making. I master that. Then I learned investing. Then I master that. It's building on the mix. It wasn't jumping from one thing to another. Because you have to understand, it doesn't matter what you're trying to do. In the beginning, it's going to suck. Because in the beginning, you suck. But you get better. And as time goes by, as you try more things, you learn from your mistakes, you suck less. And eventually, you suck so little that you actually get good. And then when you get good, you keep getting guidance, getting feedback, asking for help, learning from someone. And eventually something magical happens. This business thing, this entrepreneurship thing becomes easy. Not that it's easy, not that it's changed. It's because you are less dumb and you're sucking less. Guarantee you. So I heard the first video that I did. I said, let me tell you the first book that I did. Many years ago, I wrote a book in my early 20s called Quick Turn Marketing. It's absolutely horrible. Horrible. The, the color was wrong. The, the inside, the grammatical errors. I mean, it is horrible. If you find it on eBay, I'll buy that thing. Like, seriously. I don't, I don't, I don't want it on, in, the, in the marketplace. Do not want it in the marketplace. Like, I would buy it from you. See, if you find it, let me know. I would buy it. Like, I'll burn it. Like, burn that bitch. Like, seriously. <laughs> Jesus. So, if you think about it, from my first book, horrible. Second book, also pretty bad. And eventually, okay, now after now I've done uh, 12 books, I'm happy with the last two or three that I did. But if I didn't do the first one, I didn't suck with the first one, then how would I get to here? Does that make sense? So, master, don't dabble. Master, don't dabble. And their last lesson I want to share with you. Lesson number seven. And that is this. You don't have to get it right. You just have to get it going. You don't have to get it right. You just have to get it going. Most entrepreneurs, what do they do? They mentally masturbate too much. <laughs> oh, uh, hey, uh, I don't know. Should I do this? Oh, what do you think? Oh, should I do this? Oh, maybe later. Uh, 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 uh. Fuck! Right? Just want to slap on the face. Shit! As you're thinking, see, perfection is the enemy of progress. Perfection is the enemy of progress. It's not about being perfect. It's about making progress. It's making progress. 
So you wrote the, you know, you wrote an email that you don't like. Who fucking gives a damn? Just send it. You, you recorded a video that you don't like. Upload it. You want an article that you don't like? Share it. You have a recent post that you tweak, you know, tweak the crap out of it. There's a great quote that I like by LinkedIn founder, Reid Hoffman. He said, if you're not embarrassed by the first version of your product, you've launched too late. <laughs> if not embarrassed by the first version of your product, you've launched too late. So the only person that can stop you from achieving anything, everything you want is you. You don't need to ask, you don't need to wait for permission. You don't need to wait for someone to tell you it's the right time. Better ask for forgiveness than permission. Because you are a fucking entrepreneur. That's what you're born to do. That's what we do. We create stuff. We promote. We push in the marketplace. We don't give a fuck what people think. That's what you're born to do. This is your destiny. So let this talk ignite that fire, that drive, the power, that passion within you. And you go out there and you make shit happen. You just fucking go for it. Thank you very much.